In my 50 years of consulting and advising, the most insightful question I've been ever asked was very recent. Chairman of a very large company in a one-on-one -on -one coaching session suddenly dropped a question. Why good companies fail? I never thought about companies failing. Institutions never die. It's the individuals who are mortal. Institutions are immortal is what I was trained, I was taught. And all of a sudden, I realized the life expectancy of companies was getting shorter and shorter. So I told the chairman that I'll do all the research at my own expense, actually. I'm very curious about this question. And then I discovered something that I never thought about. Most good companies fail by being unable or unwilling to adapt when the environment has changed. On the way to success, all good companies acquire seven bad habits. So I created a framework called Seven Bad Habits of Good Companies. We, of course, have books on seven good habits of effective people, but this is the other side of the coin, which I think is very fascinating that we can talk about, learn quite a lot, and do research. So fundamentally, good companies fail because they're either unwilling or unable to adapt to the changing environment. We have seen the collapse of so many great retailers, such as J.C. Penney, Radio Shack, Brooks Brothers, Neiman Marcus. I mean, they are the icons of the world. They have all collapsed in 2019, 2020, because of the COVID and people not being able to do at the shopping centers. Shopping centers themselves are trying to figure out what to do next. My research is pre-COVID, and among the seven bad habits I found, the most dangerous one companies acquire is denial of new realities. In America, we, again, we have gone through the denial in the automotive industry. Japanese can never make good cars. We are the best in the world. Maybe Germans can, com can, can compete with us. But today, that's not the case. The largest car maker is no longer General Motors or Ford or Chrysler. It is Toyota and Volkswagen. Denial of new reality in terms of technology. Nobody thought about cloud computing and its impact. People who are in the computer business never thought PC can do the work of mainframe computers. PC people did not realize that cell phones will be more transformative than PC itself. Think about how IBM as a legacy computer company didn't understand competition from Microsoft, both on the hardware and the software. And of course, digital corporation refused to accept PC can ever do the job of a mainframe computer. So denial of technology, new technology, disruptive technologies is the second one. And the third one, of course, is global competition. The world is globalizing. Who would have imagined 35, 40 years ago that China will become number two economy in the world and actually become a significant rival to the American dominance in the world as the superpower, economic, military, and political. So denial is the first major bad habit we acquire. Second one, equally together, is complacency. The old saying that, in fact, success breeds failure. Very true. Companies become complacent because they got monopoly rights, because of, in fact, the invention they might have created, or they got a franchise of some sort. Regulated monopolies are classic cases, telephone companies, utility companies, etc. So complacency is a second major problem. Third one actually is competitive myopia, which means that like a marathon race, you may have 10,000 people all racing as it happens with the startup industry. Most of them cannot make it. A few run ahead of others, five, six people. You are just watching them, and out of nowhere, somebody else comes and takes the winner's place. We see that happening in the 5G race right now. Nobody heard about Huawei technologies as a world leader in telecom infrastructure and companies like Alcatel or uh, our company around here, uh, they have all gone pretty much. Ericsson is now trying to compete with Huawei technologies all over the world. So the third major thing is competitive myopia. Fourth major problem of successful companies is arrogance. 
for whatever reason, companies become arrogant and in fact the best arrogance was shown publicly by General Motors, largest corporation in America in the 50s, creating jobs for all of the supplier companies even, huge multiplier, comes and basically says what's good for GM is good for the nation, telling in the public policy debates in front of hearings, pure arrogance or hubris. Fifth one is what I call competency dependence. What was your competency has become irrelevant, but you are trapped into that one. The more specialized you are, the more difficult it will be to get out of that competency. So core competency becomes actually a core liability. And we have seen many, many people, people who are brick and mortar retailers are not able to go to online retailing. Out of nowhere, Amazon comes in and Amazon changes the paradigm altogether and you are not able to transition from the physical world to the digital world. Your competency comes in the way. Next, sixth bad habit is volume obsession. There's this belief that economies of scale works and therefore we can capture more market share at any cost, price reduction, whatever we do, collapse the margin and ultimately you collapse yourself in the process. This obsession to have a scale is not necessarily the only way to succeed in business. Some of the niche companies actually are more valued in the stock market than one of the big mainstream big box retailers, for example, versus something online that you offer, whatever you look at the examples. I have a book called The Rule of Three where you find most companies are very well off as big players or as niche players. In the middle is the ditch primarily. So volume obsession comes in the way and the last bad habit is internal turf wars by functions, by uh, geography, by product lines. Internal politics and internal turf wars, people are loyal to their functions. I'm an HR person, I'm loyal to my HR discipline. Does not matter who you are, I can work for you or work for somebody else. I'm an R&D person, just I know R&D and I'm loyal to my R&D or engineering or supply chain or marketing, whatever we are. Our allegiance and loyalty is more toward our functional expertise than it is toward the corporation. So seven bad habits of good companies became a framework. Wrote a book called The Self-Destructive Habits of Good Companies. It is translated in 14 languages so far and it is coming back again now in prominence because of COVID, coronavirus, bringing about enormous disruptive change in the society. So this is the other side of the coin, why good companies fail. And by the way, individual life expectancy is rising and the corporate life expectancy is declining to under nine, 10 years. Today's S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies list, if you look at it, companies who were big in 70s, very few are left there. The last major casualty is General Electric. Who would have thought that General Electric will go out of the business? or will become smaller and smaller and break it itself up to survive. Fascinating. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture.